Well, I, I had a schoolmate who had a, 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 this was in elementary school, but uh, he had a older sister who played guitar. And through a series of negotiations, I got use of her guitar for a weekend. Now, I did have a few friends who could tell me a little something, mostly adults, uh, and I had learned an E minor chord. But by the end of that weekend, I figured I had invented a D chord. I did not know that everybody knew that. It uh, came about that I went to a NAM show, which I, I really enjoyed doing, and, and uh, I was up on the upper floors where the Gibson monarchy exists and looking through uh, the various rooms, and I had been all through the Gibson display. First of all, it looked wonderful. Uh, and it was obviously done by somebody with a con consciousness of old epiphones and, and that whole aesthetic. But then I picked it up and I played it. And to nobody in particular, I held the guitar up in the middle of the floor and I said, this is the best guitar on this floor. When I got the Epiphone, and, and it was a typical NAM show deal where I said, okay, so I want to buy the guitar. They go, you can't do that because we've got to go to uh, uh, Music Mesa and uh, all the other shows. And this is the thing. I said, fine, I'll buy it after it's done. They said, well, but you know, then it's going to be uh, scratch and dent. I said, well, okay, I'll scratch and dent it if it isn't already scratch and dent it. So we made this deal where the, the instrument went all the way around the continent doing the various guitar shows and instrument shows, came back, and eventually I bought the guitar. So that particular instrument uh, it just started to be everywhere with me. I, I went to the Bahamas with it. I'm starting to take it to songwriting sessions because it's so convenient. And this particular case I have is one of those very lightweight cases and great for that purpose. Just recently, uh, here in Nashville, we were cutting Nashville Cats with Tony Jackson and uh, uh, ended up that uh, that guitar is uh, prominently featured in the video. Yeah, and it, it happened to me quite by accident. Uh, first of all, I was a tremendous fan of the music that was starting to come out. And sometimes I didn't know that it was Nashville or Memphis or Bakersfield. I was just responding to the music. But I also knew that when you cut records here, you could like finish an album <laughs> in, in a in day and a half. And, uh, but the Spoonful actually played in Nashville in about 65 or so. And we finished our show, I guess the Municipal Auditorium, or what was biggest then, but this was the biggest thing in town. And w we felt pretty good about it, and we went back to the Holiday Inn and go to the beer bar in the basement and 
get some beers and we're sitting there and this guy comes in and goes and sits in the corner. There's not even a stage. It's just sort of a place with a destroyed amplifier and he sits there and pulls out this guitar and he is absolutely frightening. Starts off with something kind of Chet atkins -y, you know, you could conceive of. But then it starts to get these bends in it like pedal steel tones and and multiple bend stuff and and then j more jazz chords and now we're in what now they call hillbilly jazz and by the time this guy finished me and Zalianowski went up to our room because in those days the spoonful was still sharing rooms and we sit on the edges of the beds and we go how could this be we are playing the big joint in town and this guy is in the beer bar. He can play rings around us. And how does this work? Is this like four guys with long hair? Fine, go to the auditorium. I, you know, we didn't even know how this really had happened. But it was years before we figured out that the kid had been a young Danny Gatton. <laughs> just making spare change in the beer bar. <laughs> but it, it, it traumatized us for a while. Uh, I saw it on an album cover. I, I pointed it out. Years later, Zolly and I were in some record store looking for something, and I go, Oh my God, this is the guy from the beer bar. And yeah, I have since, uh, the Danny Gatton fans sent me like a stack of eight of his CDs. And I cannot understand how he does the first damn thing. <laughs>